two code bases and one design. Bootstrap versus custom HTML and CSS. Before we begin, this video sponsor is Linode and they make it easy and affordable to host your site, app, or service on whatever technology stack you use. Unlike entry-level hosting services, Linode is a step up to powerful, fast, fully configurable cloud computing. With server plans starting at just $5 plus no hidden fees or surprise outages, Linode offers a no-nonsense hosting at a price you can afford. So sign up now using the link below to get a $20 credit on your new Linode account. Hey everyone, what's up? Gary Simon of Corsetra.com. So today, we're going to take a look at a single UI design and we're going to look at the results, specifically file size associated with using bootstrap as opposed to just doing it with custom HTML and CSS. And this is the design, something I came up with very fast in a single sitting. I, you know, very simple. There's nothing else. It's just these elements that you see. And this is the custom HTML version that I did. And then here's the bootstrap version over here. You can see it's port 5000 versus 5001. So these are two different designs and I'm going to show you basically what I did I uh, and give you my thoughts about using bootstrap here in 2019 all right so let's go ahead and get started all right so let's go ahead and talk about the minified HTML and CSS for both versions first we're going to cover the custom HTML and CSS that I wrote meaning I wrote all the HTML in the CSS without the help of bootstrap or any other framework just a straight up HTML file and a CSS or a SAS file so the HTML for that demo, that example that I showed you came in at 1.3 kilobytes and the CSS at 1.4, totaling in at 2.7 kilobytes. A nice, real low uh, you know, HTML and CSS file size for the site to load fast. So now let's talk about doing that same layout and the same structure with Bootstrap 4. All right, so the HTML this time came in at 3.1 kilobytes as opposed to the HTML only being 1.3 kilobytes here. And let's examine why. So right here we have the bootstrap HTML. First, actually, let's look at my HTML without the bootstrap. You can see it's nice and clean. I, there's not a lot of classes applied to it. Very, very simple. And of course it is 63 lines of code. And then bootstrap, the bootstrap way of doing is doing things and structuring things is by specifying a number of different classes for uh, the grid, also for margin and padding and things like that. And you can also see there's a lot more nested elements in here doing it the bootstrap way of using their cards, for instance. Uh, and this came in at 77 lines however there's also a lot more characters as well all right uh, so continuing on we have our css though it's which is smaller the custom css so whenever you're working on a bootstrap project you're probably going to want to make unique uh, adjustments to your own css file itself and so i only had a uh, you know probably like uh, less than half of the amount of CSS required here compared to the CSS of 1.4 KB here. And then bootstrap.min, which I included in this version for, at, for from a CDN or a content delivery network, total in at 152 kilobytes. And I know some people do that. And that shows us that there's a total of 155 kilobytes, meaning if you were to make this production ready with your Bootstrap 4 for that element, for, for that UI design, it would be 58 times larger than the custom HTML CSS of just 2.7 kilobytes. Now I know you're thinking that's not exactly fair because people can take their Bootstrap 4 and run it through purge CSS or un-CSS, which is simply the process of specifying your HTML file and it will look automatically through all of your selectors that you're using, like your classes, and then compare it based on the CSS that you're using, such as Bootstrap, and it will get rid of all of those selectors and those rule sets from Bootstrap and from the CSS, which will result in a much less smaller file size. So I did the same idea with Purge CSS to see how much closer we can get these two to being. So this, of course, is all the same. We didn't run it through. We didn't need to run that through Purge CSS. Uh, with Bootstrap 4, uh, the HTML, of course, remained the same. But with Purge CSS, it did get it down drastically from 100 something kilobytes, 155, down to 6.2 kilobytes, which is huge. The total, of course, is 9.3 KB. However, we still see a large discrepancy 
three, yeah, of course, being 58 times versus 3.4 times is a massive difference and a huge improvement. However, 3.4 times is a ton, especially if we're talking about in the context of a real project where you have a site perhaps with multiple pages, a lot more HTML, a lot more CSS, a lot more needs, where perhaps your custom HTML CSS maybe totals in at 50 kilobytes. With Bootstrap 4, it might end up being 150 kilobytes, even while using per CSS. So that begs the question, is Bootstrap worth it? All right, so should you use Bootstrap if you don't know CSS or if you suck at it? My answer is no. I don't think that's a good enough excuse especially because you're still gonna have to learn the bootstrap way of doing things, understanding all the classes, the grid system, the utilities. You're still gonna have to spend a lot of time trying to memorize that and bake that into muscle memory by applying it to a number of projects. I think it would be better spent, and your time would be better spent, by just learning CSS itself and how it works on a very base level idea. Now, should you use bootstrap for production? No. I. I, I think we already went over the reasons why you would want to avoid that for production because even with using something like un-CSS or purge CSS, it's still going to be larger. You could use it for production if you don't care about file sizes and load times, which I think that's a bad thing anyways. You should always worry about that. Should you use Bootstrap for prototypes or demos? Maybe. I would say yes, if you already have an understanding, a solid understanding, you've already used it for a while of Bootstrap and how it works. Uh, but there are probably better other tools on CSS frameworks such as Balma that might be more suitable to learn if you want to go that route. And finally, should you use Bootstrap if you suck at design and you're unwilling to pay for a UI designer and you won't buy an optimized template or a theme and you won't use another CSS framework. If you fall into this, you know, this cascading criteria, then yes, you're fine to use Bootstrap in my opinion. But if you suck at design and perhaps you're a front end developer and or you're, you're a back ender and you want to put to your, together your own project, if you suck at design, don't do it yourself. You, if it's something that's gonna be production ready, maybe like a portfolio, don't do it yourself you should try to pay somebody like a UI designer. That should be your next step. If you're not willing to pay for a UI designer, then I think you would be better served to buy a optimized template or theme that's not based on any CSS framework, but something that's very low in file size that looks great and also performs well on different devices. After that, if you're not willing to do that, then perhaps at least definitely do your research on other more modern CSS frameworks such as Balma. And if you're unwilling to do that, then fine, go right ahead and use Bootstrap. All right, so hopefully you found that helpful. One of the driving reasons that the minified version with Purge CSS of Bootstrap was still quite a bit larger is because it does include different things such as more CSS uh, classes for the grid system that it uses. And I definitely use the grid system, especially for the header where we had the logo on the left and also the navigation on the right and also the gallery, uh, the four thumbnails that you saw there. Uh, when it comes to writing your own CSS using, using, for instance, the CSS grid, which Bootstrap does not use, then I achieved the responsive gallery through three single properties in one selector. So that is a big uh, advantage that, you know, writing custom CSS has over Bootstrap itself. All right, so if you're interested and you like these videos, make sure to subscribe. Leave your thoughts down below. Do you still use Bootstrap or Bootstrap 4? Do you use something else? Or do you prefer to stick with everything being custom? All right, see you guys soon. Goodbye.